Hello everyone, welcome to the video on Diabetes mellitus. It is a rampant disease and I will provide you brief understanding about Diabetes mellitus. In this video, I am going to explain uh, what is hyperglycemia, uh, what are the functions of insulin, what are glucose transporters are and what are the types of Diabetes mellitus and the symptoms. Videos like this kind will be available in my channel. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe my channel. Let's get into the topic. Now, Diabetes mellitus. First, let us understand what is this term stands for. Diabetes means passing or going across. Mellitus means sweet, sweet like honey. Literally, it means passing sweet urine. So, Diabetes mellitus as the name, it is a Greek word and it indicates passing sweet urine. That means people who suffer with Diabetes mellitus will pass a lot of urine which is sweet in nature. Why sweet? Because there is a lot of glucose in their urine and the reason why a lot of glucose is passing through urine is there is increased levels of glucose in the blood. So this is the major sign of this diabetes mellitus and this is known as hyperglycemia. Hyper means excess, glyce means glucose, emia means blood. Literally this indicates there is an increased levels of glucose in the blood. How much is too much? Normally in the human body there need to be at least 90 to 120 milligrams of glucose per deciliter of blood. Deciliter is nothing but 100 ml of blood. That means when you draw 100 ml of blood all the time it has to contain 90 to 120 milligram of glucose. Why? Because glucose is the one which is providing energy to us. That energy is in the form of ATP. That is the reason why when people become weak they will take glucose water that instant energy add is related to this glucose and that energy is required all the time and it is in the form of glucose. You can see this one, in normal blood glucose less amount of glucose is there. In high blood glucose lot of glucose molecules are there and that condition is known as hyperglycemia. Moving further, now why is this condition is happening? Why people are having this hyperglycemia? Let us understand one by one. When we take food, mostly it is carbohydrate, the carbohydrate is digested and it forms glucose molecules in the stomach. That is what happens in our digestion. Now the glucose gets into the blood circulation. In the blood, glucose level increases. The increased glucose level gives a stimulation to pancreas gland that makes insulin. So the moment pancreas realizes there is a lot of glucose in the blood, it releases insulin. You can see here the job of insulin is it, it takes the glucose into cells, cells and tissues, especially skeletal muscle and adipose. So in order this glucose to get inside the skeletal muscle and adipose, it needs the help of insulin. So that is how uh, insulin will take the glucose from blood to skeletal muscle and adipose tissue. Now what happens in diabetes mellitus? There is little or no insulin enters in the bloodstream. There is a problem in insulin release. If insulin is not there, what happens? All the glucose accumulates inside the blood and that condition is what we call it as hyperglycemia. So this is what happens in diabetes cases and that is the reason why people get hyperglycemia condition. Moving further, now let us understand the roles of this insulin. Observe carefully. See, whenever we take food, there is a lot of glucose in the blood. The increased or high blood glucose level gives a signal to pancreas. The job of pancreas is whenever it releases, it senses higher amounts of glucose, it releases insulin. Now insulin has got a lot of functions. One of the major function is stimulate glucose uptake into the cell as I told you especially to skeletal muscle and adipose, adipocytes that means fat cells. Not only that in the liver insulin makes sure that glucose is getting converted to glycogen. See glucose is a monomer, glycogen is a polymer. So the small glucose molecule will combine to form a bigger glycogen. Whenever there is a requirement of glucose is there from this glycogen glucose comes up. But what insulin is doing? It is converting glucose to a polymer glycogen. Not only that, in, in fat cells it synthesizes lipid. It enhances protein synthesis in muscle. So overall what this insulin does is it is taking smaller molecules and converting into big or macro molecules. This process is known as anabolism. Anabolism means making up bigger molecules, making up polymers. So insulin is a kind of anabolic hormone. Now the next part. 
Now, whenever blood glucose level drops, when glucose level is coming down, when glucose level comes down, again it gives a signal to pancreas. Pancreas now releases glucagon, another hormone. The job of this glucagon is it will be acting on liver and converts glycose into glucose. What it is doing, the polymer glycosin is getting converted into glucose and it gets into the blood. So what happens, this is how the blood glucose level is maintained. When glucose is high, insulin releases, glucose gets into the cells and tissues. When glucose is low, glucagon releases and, and it stimulates the breakdown of glycose into glucose and releases glucose into the blood. All the time, these levels are maintained, 90 to 120 milligrams per deciliter. Now, when you see diabetic patients, what is required is, there are two different conditions are there. Fasting blood glucose level. Fasting means overnight when you don't take any food, that, that condition is called as fasting level. So early morning without taking food, when you give blood to know the glucose level, it is called as fasting blood sugar levels. It has to be when it is less than 100 mg of glucose per deciliter, this is considered to be normal. Till 126, it is if 100 to 126 is there, it is considered as pre-diabetic condition. That means they are prone to get diabetes. If the levels are more than 126 milligrams, this is all in fasting level, it is considered as diabetes. If it is more than 126 milligrams per deciliter, it is considered as diabetes. Now, the other one, postprandial. See, the test will say this, postprandial. Prandial means food state. Postprandial means after having food. When we take food, naturally glucose level increases because the carbohydrates releases glucose. Now, after taking food, when you see the random blood glucose levels, if it is more than 200 mg per deciliter, again, this is considered a diabetes. So, there are two different tests are there, fasting, postprandial. In fasting, if it is more than 126 mg per deciliter, it is considered as diabetes. After taking food, the random test, if it is greater than 200, it is considered a diabetes. Next one. Now, what is the effect of this insulin in glucose uptake? What this insulin does so that the glucose is getting inside cells and tissue. See, whenever this insulin releases, it acts on a particular receptor. The job of this receptor is it activates something called as GLUT. GLUT means glucose transporter. These are small vesicles which will transport glucose. They are inside the cell. Whenever insulin is activated these vesicles, they go to cell membrane and they make sure insulin is getting inside the cell. This is how they will make sure glucose is getting inside the cell. Especially you see this one, from the digestive system glucose is released. The glucose will be getting into muscle, adipose and liver with the help of insulin. That is, that is what happens with insulin. And how, how it happens? Insulin activates a particular receptors which will reuptake, I'm sorry, uptake glucose from the blood to the cells. So this is how the, this is what is the effect of insulin on glucose uptake. Now, see this glucose transporter, I, I, here, I, here it is, it says it is GLUT4, glucose transporter 4. There are a lot of transporters are there. All of them, the job is to transport glucose. But the important one is glucose transporter 4. The reason is it is insulin dependent. That means if insulin is not there, glucose will not get absorbed or gluco glucose will not be uptaken into the cell. And skeletal muscle, adipose and heart, all the three has got this glucose transporter 4. That means all these three tissue without insulin, they cannot get glucose. This is what is the problem is. You can see blood, liver, pancreas, brain, all of them are insulin independent. Without insulin, glucose gets into them. Otherwise, our survival will be very difficult because brain is completely dependent on glucose to get energy. So, it doesn't require any transporter. What we, for, for which kind of tissue it needs a transporter? Skeletal muscle, adipose and heart. All of them are insulin dependent. So if insulin is not there or insulin amounts are low, this tissue will get affected. Now let us see the types of diabetes mellitus. Type 1 is also known as autoimmune. It is a kind of autoimmune disorder in which, see insulin is secreted by pancreas. The pancreas cells will get destroyed because of autoimmune disease and release of insulin is very much reduced. Look at the diagram. In healthy individual, whenever glucose is released, it stimulates pancreas and insulin is also released. So whatever the glucose is there in the blood with the help of insulin, they will be getting into 
skeletal muscle and adipose this is the normal healthy cells now in type 1 there is an autoimmune disease which is destroying pancreas cells so there is less amount of insulin is released so very low amount will get into cells because low amount of insulin is there again see look at the difference insulin dependent tissues like skeletal muscle and adipose will get highly affected now this is an autoimmune disorder uh, uh, usually it occurs in early age too so to treat this insulin has to be given no other choice is there because intrinsically there is a reduced amount of insulin so you need to give insulin only next one type see the type 1 diabetes again the same thing is explained diagrammatically whatever the glucose gets into the blood uh, will be taken into the cells in presence of insulin but pancreas produce little or no insulin in type 1 so the glucose remains inside the blood and that is what increases levels of glucose in the blood hyperglycemic condition now see look at this type 1 see of all the diabetics only 5 to 10 percent belong to this type 1 diabetes which is an autoimmune disease so majority of people suffer with type 2 diabetes and 95 percent 90 to 95 percent of the people will suffer with type 2 diabetes now we have seen what happens in healthy cells in type 2 diabetes what happens is say either insulin amount is reduced or cells become insulin resistant that means even though insulin is released cells are unable to uh, take up glucose in presence of insulin so organs are unresponsive to insulin less glucose is stored or it is being used because insulin glucose is not getting inside the cell where it stays again it stays in the blood and it increases it causes hyperglycemia now the same thing is explained here type 2 diabetes glucose is there insulin is also released but the problem is cells become a little bit resistant it is called insulin resistance now see 95 percent of the people suffer with this thing and these are all the major risk factors for this one first one lack of exercise or sedentary lifestyle people who do not move much they will get affected see sedentary lifestyle will cause overweight sedentary lifestyle and unhealthy eating this is also a major risk people who eat a lot of junk food who do not do any exercise they will become obese and finally it causes type 2 diabetes family history also plays a role but type 2 diabetes is considered as a lifestyle disease because the way you eat the way you do exercise if you are overweight all of them contribute to diabetes mellitus in fact the Vellore medical college has released a, a research paper on diabetes stating that people who do exercise do not require insulin medication if, if someone has got recently diagnosed diabetes if they start exercise and do diet control that would be good enough to treat diabetes mellitus moving further now let us see the symptoms you have acute symptoms are there the first one is known as polyuria let us understand what you mean by this poly means multiple urea means urination this is nothing but frequent urination condition why is this happening see in kidney you have a, a functional unit known as nephron in nephron all the blood will get filtered now whenever kidney is whenever in diabetic patients the blood will be containing a lot of glucose all the glucose reaches here and it gets into this nephron because the uh, glucose concentration is very high it draws a lot of water from the surrounding tissue this is called as osmosis when glucose concentration is very high it increases osmotic gradient to neutralize that water is drawn towards this urine so what happens the urine formation is very high which also includes glucose so what has happened Mul frequent urination is there which is releasing a lot of glucose along with that this is what is diabetes mellitus is meant at the beginning i explained diabetes mellitus means passing through sweet urine so a lot of urine comes out and it also carries glucose and because of water going a lot of water is going outside the urine people will go for frequent urination this condition technical is known as polyuria multiple times they will go for urination now what is happening in this process body is losing a lot of water and a lot of water will result in dehydration and this dehydration pushes people to take lot to take a lot of water because it is increasing thirst so increased intake of water is known as polydipsia poly means multiple time dip dipsia means drinking water 
So this C, polyurea is causing dehydration which is causing polydipsia. Now the other one, polyphagia, poly again multiple times, phagia means to eat. See, I told you the effect of insulin is it is an anabolic hormone. Anabolic hormone means glucose is converted to glycogen and it is stored. Free fatty acids and all of them are converted into fats and proteins are there. So when insulin levels are reduced, all of them will get reduced. So all these, all these polymers will not be stored properly inside. So what happens, body is losing, in addition to that body is losing a lot of glucose through this urinary tract. So because you are not getting enough glucose, the appetite, appetite increases. When appetite is increased, people start eating too much. That condition is known as polyphagia. So these are all the major triad of diabetes mellitus symptoms, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. Next, now the chronic symptoms are nephropathy, neuropathy, tetanopathy. Nephra means kidney. The functional unit of kidney is nephron. Pathy means pathology. This is, so kidney got damaged. Neuropathy, neurons got damaged. Retinopathy, retina means eye, eye got damaged. These are microvasculature symptoms. And then it also affects heart functioning, which may result in stroke and atherosclerosis. You know, long-term diabetes will cause all these things. And the more problematic one are diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state. See, these two are dangerous, which may lead to coma and needs immediate hospitalization. We'll see them. Now, see, this hyperglycemic condition, what happens is it results in a condition called as hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. What happens is in this condition, because insulin amounts are low, all the proteins are converted to amino acids. Proteins will break down results in amino acids. Amino acids get into liver and liver starts converting them into glucose. That process is called as gluconeogenesis. Glycogenolysis means glycogen breakdown occurs which results in formation of glucose. Why this is happening? Because body is losing glucose from the urine. Body do not have enough glucose. So liver converts all of them to glucose. Again, it is increasing the levels of glucose in blood which is known as hyperglycemia. That increases osmotic diuresis and it results in profound dehydration. That state is known as this one. And if this is not treated immediately, it may result in coma. The other one, diabetic ketoacidosis. They told you fat lipids will break down and they are converted into fatty acids. Fatty acids will produce ketone bodies. They will increase acidity and that is what is called as ketoacidosis. Again, very high levels of ketone bodies is dangerous. This needs immediate medical attention. Next one. See, diabetic nephropathy. See, the nephron, this is how the blood will get filtered from here. See, I'm sorry. Blood will get filtered from here and all the solids has to remain inside the body and filtrate has to go out. Because nephron is damaged, albumin or some kind of proteins will also be passing through the urine. That is called as albuminuria. These are very essential proteins which has to be present in blood and body is losing them and this is a dangerous condition. Nephro retinopathy, eye damage occurs. The eye damage occurs, people may lose eyesight also. <coughs> Excuse me. Diabetic nephropathy. See, little amount of glucose is, is fine, but when there is an excess amount of glucose, that will cause damage to the neurons. That is what is known as neuropathy. So these are all the final uh, symptoms. We have seen retinopathy, neuropathy, stroke, cardiomyopathy, and diabetic food. See, the wound healing will get reduced because of excessive levels of glucose in the blood, diabetes mellitus. Nephropathy, we have seen people will lose albumin. And reduced blood flow occurs again because of diabetes. So overall, it has got debilitating, very, very harmful effects on human body. So this is about diabetes mellitus. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my video, subscribe.